I feel like social media plays a major part in happiness. Like yes. the way I want to ask this is when you were living with the Amish, there was no such thing as a comparison game. You had no idea right. what was going on in the real world. Did you feel that state of bliss and happiness during those two years on the, the farm? Yeah, I often go, why did I ever leave the Amish? I remember <laughs> leaving. You didn't want to get married, right? <laughs> well, no, I wasn't actually Am. Um, they're, they're, they're I was going to say, why did you join in the first place? I never joined Amish. the Amish. Okay. You, to join them is to get baptized in their church. And I wasn't that, I've never been that exact religious belief. But um, when I left and I knew it was just time to go, no specific reason, I just felt it in my bones, like time to go to the next phase. Um I remember thinking, I will look back one day and always question, maybe I should have just stayed here. Um, and, you know, the comparison thing. So here's my take on the comparison. It is true that social media is hijacking our brains um, into a comparative mode that is unhealthy. The flip side of that, everything has like thesis, you know, Immanuel Kant, the philosopher, said you have thesis, antithesis, synthesis. So the th one thesis is that we're getting unhappier because we see the happiest moments. That's what they post to their social. So like depression is on the rise, especially at like young women. You know, I see everybody's good looking, better than them. The average person ain't good looking, right? So, but the, the antithesis, the opposite side of that is so, there, first off, there always is comparison, even among the Amish. My synthesis, how I blend those two, the healthiest is, you should build your life around a tribe. And tribe size should be almost exactly 150 people. There's a famous scientist, uh, Robin Dunbar, an anthropologist. We evolved in groups of 150, and there's a math behind it. Our brain can basically handle the interplay of 150 people comparatively. You need to be able to compare. It's important. And then that's 10,000 connections if you do the math. Because not only do, if you're in my tribe, I got to keep track of you and my relationship. But if you're in my tribe, I have to also keep track of your two relationships. So if you take 150 people and you do the math on the neural web, it's about 10,000 interactions. What's happening now with social media that, that fucks everybody up, it's too many neural connections. So you should have comparison, but you can't go too big of a group. In fact, it's funny, on the way over here, I was thinking, good new framework that I'm experimenting with, because I always have these like kind of mad scientists saying, imagine... The only real people on earth is your tribe of 150 people, and everybody else is a hologram meant to, or, or some kind of a- NPC. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> but, but your 150 is real. Yeah. Because I think you go wacky when you think everything is a simulation. And, <laughs> but say, say there's 150 real people, that's your tribe. Everybody outside of it is a lesson for your tribe. That's a little video game character. I think it's also a discipline. Like, I- I found myself following these four, this girlfriend group, and I followed all, all four of them in the group on Instagram. And every day I would watch their stories and see yeah. what they were doing. I'm like, I know so much about these people's daily lives. I've never met any of them. Like, what yeah. the fuck am I doing here? And I unfollowed all of them. Yeah, that's not, yeah, be dedicating careful. Dedicating way too much energy to. Yeah, because that algorithm is good. If you start following pretty women, it starts. Free. Although I don't <laughs> think that's the worst thing for guys. Hey guys, if you enjoyed this short clip, check out the full interview here. And if you want to see more clips from this episode, check it out right here.